spring seasons. Again, would like to acknowledge uh, uh, those host schools that are holding our uh, state tournaments uh, in their high school venues. Thank you much for your ability to do that and provide the opportunities that you currently are. Uh, we have our agenda here for today. We're going to have an update from the website. We're actually going to have our spring sports update go first. Before that, Jody is going to be traveling off to another state here via Zoom uh, and has limited time with us. So we're going to let her go ahead and talk about track and field a little bit. Uh, update on venue capacity according to MDH. Winter season or winter postseason updates along with competitive section updates. We'll finish with our, with our quick takes and then we will let you go for today. So if we could go to our spring guidance at this time, Susie, our next slide. Um, Jody's gonna update uh, us as to where we're at with track and field. And then uh, Jody, while we have you here too, if you could just uh, give a quick shout out and an update on AAA too, if you would. Thanks, Bob. And just FYI, your camera is not working for, I cannot see you. So I just I'd let you know that. Um, but in the, it, we had a wonderful celebration Monday night. Uh, we celebrated all 32 of the AAA award winners from each of the member schools who had those that made it to the finalists um, of that event. Um, I'd like to just give a shout out, uh, Kaden Trebenbach from Osakis High School and Preston Roloff from Hancock High School were our scholarship winners for class A. And the AA winners were Allison uh, Benjamin from Eastridge High School and Lane Versteg from Oatana High School uh, for the class AA scholarship winners. So um, really was a nice opportunity for us to really highlight the wonderful accomplishments of all 32 of those uh, student uh, participants. So with that, I'd like to move into track and field. Um, Susie, if you want to go back to that uh, slide, it's not a problem. Laura's, we are adjusting Laura's, our track and field guidelines. Thank you, Laura. We're adjusting our track and field guidelines. Uh, those were sent out on Tuesday uh, following the liaison meeting. Um, we are now going to give you a range of individuals that can be at a track event, meaning we you may not exceed 250 student athletes and coaches um, at any given event. Um, the makeup of that 250, we're going to leave up to the conferences and the member schools to make that decision. So I wanna say this again, the, the max number of people that can be at a track and field event are 250, and that includes student athletes and coaches. How you determine who is at that event uh, as far as representing each school is entirely up to the host school to determine. Now, with that said, we are also highly recommending that you not have more than eight schools at any given uh, track meet. Um, we're trying to accommodate our smaller schools, some of our independent schools who are not affiliated with conferences, and certainly those schools that do not have tracks. So again, if you're looking at your events and you can allow a, a, a school maybe that has 10 or 15 student athletes into those events, really that's why this accommodation is being made. Just a reminder that the makeup of teams at those events may include a varsity and JV team together. It may include a boys and a girls team together. Um, but again, not exceeding 250 people. So hopefully this will help. The guidance came out. Just one more uh, quick um, highlight, and that is that we had originally um, said that each school could have up to four entries. Um, that is no longer the case, or that is no longer a part of the guidance either. Uh, we are going to rely on the track and field uh, rules and policies that have existed for years that allow every student athlete to be entered into four events. So again, any questions that you may have, please feel free to shoot my way. We're happy to help you uh, facilitate this in any way that we can. So with that, um, thanks, Bob. I'm going to turn it back to you. Great. Thank you, uh, Jody. My gift to everyone here today is my camera is not working. Um, <laughs> so it, it is uh, not uh, user error, but I do not have a camera that has the ability to work today. So I apologize for that. But again, it is a gift to you. Um, golf is updated as well here. You're going to note some limitations, more structure around what golf should look like, especially in those um, those multi-team events. Uh, you get to that uh, 72 um, individuals, uh, that'd be one foursome on 18 holes, uh, max of 16 teams. 
is how you get there. Again, could you do multiple of those in a day? You could if that course can accommodate it. Um, and there should be a COVID coordinator type, uh, school administrator of type, making sure someone is um, you know, administering those protocols that should be taking place uh, in the sport of golf. I will also say in our spring sport guidance, we continue to have conversations uh, with the MDH around mask use during competition and really what defines that individual sport uh, versus a team sport. The definition currently under MDH guidance is you need six feet of separation in order for that to be con uh, considered an individual sport. Again, hold tight on that information right now uh, as we continue to have those conversations. Uh, Laura, anything I missed here before we move on to uh, the website? The guidance for those two and other spring sports was resent yesterday in the other outdoor spring sports, baseball, softball, et cetera, that addressed the change in pod size also. Um, pod size has increased to 50 outdoors. However, always encourage um, you and coaches to keep those pods as small as possible and, and manageable to prevent that spread of COVID in there. But um, those were also updated. So I'm gonna move on next to share a few website pieces with you. Number one, um, please continue to work with your spring coaches as they get in and get registered. Um, when a coach creates their account, they choose a school and sport or sports. Now, many of our coaches, this may be their second or third season coaching. So they may not have quite realized that when they set their account up last fall. So you may need to go in and add that coach to your school. Um, lots of information on that. There was a March 17th update that had some step-by-step -step directions that is in the league update area, as well as the getting started guide. We've also um, run into a slight delay with getting the golf online rules meeting loaded. It is filled with videos and that has caused a bit of a challenge for us. So if you have golf coaches looking for that, it is on its way and we hope to have that soon. Secondly, want to share with you something that people have been asking about and looking for since we started this process. And we're excited to roll out this afternoon, schedules, results, and rosters synced with your Our School accounts. So I'm going to skip over here a minute and just show you um, a look of what your pages will look like later today, depending on which of these things you are currently using. So looking here at Kimball High School's homepage, um, later today, depending again on which of these things you're using, you'll start to see a scores ticker. And this would be for any varsity sport that your school is currently using results in. Your schedule will sink in for any varsity result, any varsity scheduling pieces that you use our schools for. And it syncs, I believe, about six or eight by default. This button will take you to a website page that will expand this beyond six or eight and take you to a number of yours. And then we'll also have some instructions for you on how you can make this button go directly out to your actual Our Schools page. So people would then be able to see your varsity and sub varsity as well as um, non-season events. So later today, you'll start to see your page look like this if you are using these pieces. If you are not using results right now, this piece will simply accordion up and will not be visible on your page, but your schedule will start to appear later today. This will also populate team pages. So here I've moved on to their girls basketball page. This again will pull in results from just that sport. On the school page, it pulled in across all varsity. This will pull in just varsity. It will then pull in schedule and again results if you have those for girls varsity basketball. And then for those who are using our schools right now for their rosters, this will also pull in a roster synced out of our schools. The next step 
in this is to create a roster generator so that you're able to print programs and download CSVs from multiple schools. And that is just a bit behind in development, but wanted to get these pieces out first. Going along with this, um, we know that almost all of our Minnesota schools are using schedules for our schools. The implementation of results and or rosters and how those are added and or uploaded. Um, we are a bit across the board in how those are used. So over the next two weeks, our schools is going to do a number of sessions for you and or your administrative staff to help you get up and moving as we move into spring. So you'll see an update come out about noon today that will have a number of sessions scheduled over the next two weeks for those who want to start using the schedules and the rosters portion of this also. Um, excited to see this happen and looking forward to what your pages look like later today as they start to have those schedules in with them. Bob, I'm going to turn it back to you to move on to event and facility management. Great, thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Laura, for your work on that. And I know uh, that is a welcome uh, update with the website, especially around rosters and schedules. Laura, can you reiterate schedules are pulled from uh, our schools? How about rosters? Where are where do those rosters live and how, how do those get updated? Correct. Rosters at this point will come out of our schools. We will have a way later that you can do those manually. And again, even if you're not using our schools to register your students in any way, our schools has a, uh, a basically import of your roster. So if you're able to take your roster out of whatever system you're using in a CSV or Excel, you'll be able to go into our schools and say import and pull those in, which will then sync. Great, thank you, Laura. The next two slides, you're gonna see updated language from DH, uh, MDH, um, one being indoor when it comes to event facility management, and then the next um, being outdoor. And really you're gonna see similar numbers, but uh, take a look at that April 1st date, right? So currently we're at 50% of our venue capacity or 250, right? It's the lesser of those two. Um, once we get to April 1st indoors, uh, then you're gonna see a greater capacity, um, but you're gonna have to look at what that percentage is depending on what you can hold as well. Um, so you can get to that 500, um, you can go greater than that 500 again, but you have to watch what that looks like by 15% increments. Well, will this, this language will be updated in event facility management uh, to read back through and notice that's after April 1st. So I'll use an example of the XL Energy Center. People are excited that uh, come the semifinals, there would be a crowd that is greater um, than that 250. Many believe that uh, we should just make it greater than 250 in the quarterfinals as well. Well, again, remember MDH has determined that, that it's, it's that April 1st um, date in which you can increase capacity. That is not the Minnesota State High School League determining that, that is MDH. When we get to outdoor, which we don't wanna be at today due to the rain, um, if we could go to the next slide, please. Again, that outdoor, you notice that 250, again, very similar language, but as of April 1st, again, that is going to change. Um, note what the changes are in there for that outdoor, how that looks different. You're gonna see that 10,000, uh, capacity that is that 25%, um, and that max is 10,000. That's mainly for our, um, you know, target field um, and our, our professional venues. When you see those large numbers of up to uh, 10,000, again, note that April 1st date for indoor and outdoor. Laura, anything I missed on any of those uh, venue changes, indoor and or outdoor, with updated MDH language. Um, MDH does have a venue calculator. So if you do have a large um, facility that you're trying to make sure that you are calculating correctly, they do have a venue calculator also, if that is helpful to you. 
All right, on to our next year. We're into our postseason again. Thank you so much for those of you that are hosting venues, whether it's in uh, um, sections and or state and for your extra work in doing so. We are uh, concluding our section tournaments here this week in basketball and boys hockey. We'll be seeding boys hockey on Friday, um, boys, boys and girls basketball on, um, on Saturday. And then uh, note, we're in our state tournament seasons and wrestling uh, in the semifinals and finals, gymnastics, girls hockey will be dropping the puck on Friday here this week at the X. Uh, and we'll conclude quarterfinals and girls hockey for um, on Saturday for double A. Under our next, I uh, want to update you on uh, basketball here with our quarterfinal basketball seeding. Uh, we have been in discussion and uh, consultation with our leadership from both of our basketball uh, advisory uh, leadership teams there. Note that we will have regional sites. I noted that um, that seating will take place on uh, Saturday of this week. We will not know your venue until that seating takes place. We're trying to have them as regional as possible. We've said that since day one, that competition needs to be regional. Uh, to the best of our ability, according to MDH, those sites will be Alexandria, Chanhassen, Eastridge, Hastings, Mankato East, Osseo, Purim, Pequot, St. Cloud Tech, and Mayo. Thank you very much. And here's how seeding is going to work. The, um, all eight will seed. You'll only see the other teams within that. There's a north section and a south section. South is defined as sections one, two, three, and four. North being five, six, seven, and eight. And they will rank, or you will rank seven other schools um, in terms of that eight class system. The brackets will look like this in the quarterfinal. South's one seed or their highest seed will play the South four seed, their fourth highest seed of those eight. South two will play South three, again at regional venues. On the north side, Again, that north high seed will play the north fourth seed or the, or the fourth seed of those sections uh, five, six, seven, and eight. Again, with N2 or N3, those northernmost two seeds and three seeds. In the semifinals, trying to give us that geographic um, taste, we will have the winner of um, the south one four game versus the winner of the North 2-3 game. And then the opposite end of that bracket, you'll have the one, the winner of the 1-4 seed on the North side versus uh, the winner of the 2-3 seed from the South. All right, so a little bit different this year. We know things can be and are, have been different this year due to COVID, trying to make it regional prior to us getting to the target center. Remember, we'll be on the target in the target center. Um, for our semi, starting with our semifinals um, and our finals. On to the next slide. Or Laura, anything that needs clarification there that I may have missed? Can you just clarify again, Bob, the timeline? I believe these are seated on Saturday and it'll be Saturday afternoon when teams will actually know where they're playing and who they're playing. They have not been assigned to sites yet to that facilitate that regional. Yeah, that is correct. Great point there, Laura. So the girls are seating at uh, roughly nine on uh, Saturday, the boys at 945. So we're going to do our best. I'll be doing seating and um, selecting those sites from the XL Energy Center. We'll get those out as soon as we possibly can. I think once we know who those teams uh, won't be too cumbersome, but we'll have to get that out to you as soon as we possibly can, noting that uh, you're going to want to get buses and transportation and notification out to those teams. All right, on to, uh, on to our next competitive section placement. Uh, we are working right now on placing teams into our sections. Uh, that is where we're currently at and uh, appreciate your patience on that. Reminder that uh, those will go to AD's advisory and then um, ask for approval at our board meeting on April 15th. I think we're on to quick takes, Laura, if you wanna take quick takes and then we are uh, going to conclude for today. Thanks, Bob. Couple things in our quick takes category. First of all, games wanted for spring has been added to your dashboard. 
And really that's the place for those um, games for this season, as you're trying to find a game um, to make up for some type of lost game or trying to schedule yourself in. We've had a lot of requests from that for, from track and field programs, especially those smaller programs. So as Jody talked before about that 250, and if you have room for a small track program to join any of your meets, I would suggest checking that games wanted so we can provide all of our programs some opportunity. We will again do a COVID data collection this Friday. Look for that as an update um, to come to you Friday to fill out. Um, it will encompass winter sports that you still have going. It will not start in on our traditional spring sports until the next one. And then to mark your calendar a bit, um, moving some of our lead events around for the next few weeks. Next week, there will be no lead. Anything that is lead worthy will come to you in an update um, next week. So there is no lead next week, but please watch those updates extra carefully. The next lead will be Monday, April 5th at 1045 in the morning. So kind of to split those two weeks. And then the following Monday, April 12th is the MNI AAA conference. And we will be doing lead during one of the sessions on that day. We believe that session is sometime around the noon hour. So no lead next week, and then two Mondays coming up after that. And then again, we'll see where we are as we continue to evaluate the, the value of these and the weakliness of them as we go forward. Bob, I'll turn it back to you for anything else I may have missed or to wrap up. Laura, thank you. I think that's good uh, for this week. I know there's some questions out there around quarterfinals. We'll get that information. You will, um, you will get information from your quarterfinal site on capacity, tickets, things like that. Um, turnaround will be relatively tight, but those, those sites are willing and ready to assist you. And again, we'll get that information as soon as we possibly can out to you. Otherwise, uh, have a good day. I will take into consideration of doing these meetings with my camera off in the future. Thank you for those. Uh, otherwise, have a great day, and we hope to see you at a, at a state tournament if possible. Thank you.